the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. A warm welcome to each and every one of you to this short service which acknowledges we all suffer loss in our lives and loss can be painful. The service this year will be very simple. Words, prayers, music from well-known hymns, silence, Bible readings, lit candles, a strong symbol of brightness and hope at this time of year when light is so precious and rather scarce. In the invitation you were invited to bring along um, a sprig of rosemary and this is now lying on the communion table. The moderator of the General Assembly invited people to bring rosemary and after the service I will post it off to Edinburgh where uh, Peter and Heidi Gardner will take it and um, create from it um, an art piece called Scented Lament and that will feature in a program by the moderator on New Year's Day on BBC One. The rosemary um, of course standing for remembrance. We come as we are with our many thoughts and feelings and we bring them to this act of worship as we pray and listen to God's word together. A short pause and then we move to the call to worship. When we lose, we grieve. Grief is normal. Grief is universal. At the same time, grief is extremely personal. May we and others not forget or deny our journey of grief. We come in this service to God in our need and bringing with us the needs of the world. We come with our faith and with our doubts. We come with our hopes and with our fears. We come as we are because it is God who invites us to come and our tradition claims God has promised never to turn us away. We gather as hurting people. We come seeking peace, comfort, quiet. In the presence of each other's honesty, let us worship God. In Isaiah we read, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. On those who lived in a land of deep shadow, a light has shone. For the yoke that was weighing upon them and the burden upon their shoulders, you have broken in pieces, O God. Let us pray. God of mercy, hear our prayer in this Advent season for ourselves and our families who live with painful memories of loss and painful present experiences. We ask for strength for today, courage for tomorrow, and peace for the future. We ask these things in the name of your Son, our Saviour, who shares our life in joy and sorrow, death and new birth, despair and promise. Amen. We move to a series of Bible readings which will be interspersed with some music, two or three verses from well-known hymns. We start in the Old Testament and hear words from Ecclesiastes. In a way, I think it reminds us God creates all that we know and that life, if we're honest, is a rich mixture of contrasts, ups and downs. For everything its season, and for every activity under heaven its time. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. 
a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time for mourning and a time for dancing, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to abstain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to discard, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time for silence and a time for speech, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. The Psalms have for many generations had an important part in worship in Scotland. One of the best known and often read at funerals is of course the 23rd Psalm, The Lord's My Shepherd. Today, however, I've chosen a different Psalm to read, Psalm 121. A Psalm that reminds us that in times of discomfort or distress, ultimately our help comes from the Lord who cares for us and loves us perhaps especially when we are suffering loss. If I lift up my eyes to the hills, where shall I find help? My help comes only from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot stumble. He who guards you will not sleep. The guardian of Israel never slumbers, never sleeps. The Lord is your guardian your protector at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will guard you against all harm. He will guard your life. The Lord will guard you as you come and go, now and evermore.
people think of Christmas as a time of great joy and celebration. That's because God came to earth to be one of us. How special. However, the story of the first Christmas is not so much a happy story as a story about life in the real world. Mary of Nazareth is engaged to the carpenter Joseph and discovers she's pregnant. Joseph does not want to embarrass Mary and plans to break the engagement privately. It's not an easy time for the couple. Their country is under Roman occupation and King Herod, who rules Palestine for the Romans, is known for his cruelty. Not exactly ideal conditions for bringing up a child into the world. Yet in the midst of their turmoil, God's messenger speaks to Joseph in a dream and tells him things will work out. Matthew chapter 1 from verse 18 to 24. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph. Before their marriage, she found she was going to have a child through the Holy Spirit. Being a man of principle and at the same time wanting to save her from exposure, Joseph made up his mind to have the marriage contract quietly set aside. He had resolved on this when an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home with you to be your wife. It is through the Holy Spirit that she has conceived. She will bear a son and you shall give him the name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this happened in order to fulfill what the Lord declared through the prophet. A virgin will conceive and bear a son, and he shall be called Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. When he woke, Joseph did as the angel of the Lord had directed him. He took Mary home to be his wife. In the midst of Mary and Joseph's joy over the safe birth of their child, Jesus, a new crisis looms. King Herod orders the death of all children under two, and so the Holy Family flee as refugees to Egypt. There they live for several years until King Herod dies and it's safe to return home. Mary and Joseph felt God's presence with them through all the hardships they had to face. Matthew chapter 2 from 13 to 23. After they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and escape with them to Egypt and stay there until I tell you. For Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So Joseph got up, 
took mother and child by night and sought refuge with them in Egypt, where he stayed till Herod's death. This was to fulfill what the Lord had declared through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod realized that the astrologers had tricked him, he flew into a rage and gave orders for the massacre of all the boys aged two years or under in Bethlehem and throughout the whole district in accordance with the time he had ascertained from the astrologers. So the words spoken through Jeremiah the prophet were fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah, sobbing in bitter grief. It was Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they were no more. After Herod's death, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said to him, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who threatened the child's life are dead. So he got up, took mother and child with him, and came to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus had succeeded his father Herod as king of Judea, he was afraid to go there. Directed by a dream, he withdrew to the region of Galilee, where he settled in a town called Nazareth. This was to fulfill the words spoken through the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. We move now to the book of Romans. Here again we find words about life as it is experienced at times. But besides these words, there is the hope of what lies ahead and the reassurance that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Parts of Romans chapter 8. For I reckon that the sufferings we now endure bear no comparison with the glory as yet unrevealed, which is in store for us. The created universe is waiting with eager expectation for God's sons to be revealed. It was made subject to frustration, not of its own choice, but by the will of him who subjected it, yet with the hope that the universe itself is to be freed from the shackles of mortality and is to enter upon the glorious liberty of the children of God. Up to the present, as we know, the whole created universe in all its parts groans as if in the pangs of childbirth. What is more, we also to whom the Spirit is given as the first fruits of the harvest to come are groaning inwardly while we look forward eagerly to our adoption, our liberation from mortality. With all this in mind, what are we to say? If God is on our side, who is against us? 
He did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. And how can he fail to lavish every other gift upon us? Who will bring a charge against those whom God has chosen? Not God who acquits. Who will pronounce judgment? Not Christ who died, or rather rose again. Not Christ who is at God's right hand and pleads our cause. Then what can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or hardship? Can persecution, hunger, nakedness, danger or sword? We are being done to death for your sake all day long, as scripture says. We have been treated like sheep for slaughter. And yet, throughout it all, overwhelming victory is ours through him who loved us. For I am convinced that there is nothing in death or life in the realm of spirits or superhuman powers, in the world as it is or the world as it shall be, in the forces of the universe, in heights or depths, nothing in all creation that can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. We move to our act of remembrance, and after I light each candle, there will be a time of silence for us to reflect. We light this first candle to remember those whom we have loved and lost. We pause to remember their names, their faces, their voices, the memories that bind them to us in this season. We give thanks for them. May God's eternal love surround them. This year has been a strange year when we have all suffered loss. 
We have brought this rosemary as a sign that we acknowledge and remember loss, the loss of relationships, of jobs, of health, the loss of freedom to name but some. We pause to gather up the pain of the past and offer it to God, asking that from God's hands we receive the gift of healing and peace. Accept our feelings of loss. Refresh, restore, renew us, O God, and lead us into your future. Let us pray. We are surrounded by candlelight, the lit Advent candles, and the light of two candles lit during our act of remembrance. We remember with thanksgiving those who have been and remain important to us. And at this sacred time of year, we mourn their loss and pray that they may find life in your everlasting promise. We give thanks for their lives and for everything they meant to us. Ever-loving God, present with us now, we pray for those who today suffer the pain of bereavement. God, your light shines in dark places always dispelling darkness. We thank you. We remember how everyone has suffered loss this year and pray for those who are still pained by it. God, your light shines in dark places, always dispelling darkness. We thank you. We pray for our families and friends that they may continue to help and support us even if at a distance. God, hear our prayer and in your mercy answer. For all, all our family and friends that they may know love, peace and happiness in you. God, hear our prayer and in your mercy answer. for the peace proclaimed by the Christmas angels to come throughout the whole world. God, hear our prayer and in your mercy answer. God of great compassion and love, listen to the prayers of your people. Grant to all, especially the bereaved and lonely ones this Christmas, the blessing we ask in the name of Christ. Amen.
Thank you for attending. Please do leave the way you came in, but make sure you leave two meters between you and other people, and hand sanitizer is available at the door. After the benediction, I will pop the rosemary in an envelope and go to the post office so it gets sent off and reaches Glasgow in time for the rosemary wreath being made. The benediction, please stand. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you all now and evermore. Amen.